This is Rick Talberg for CPA Trendlines with Joel Hughes, CEO of Bright Networks, and Darren Root, founder of Rootworks, now GM and Vice President of Market Strategy at Bright Networks since the two companies merged. Joel, how did this merger come about? When did you guys start talking? This merger discussion started over two years ago. Um, I joined Bright Networks about four years ago as CEO and um, met Darren um, sort of on the road, and um, we court- hit it off a little bit. And I'd say Bright Networks, you know, for the last couple of years has been looking at acquiring and also growing our own capabilities to better serve firms in, in particular beyond our SMB customer base. And um, over the last couple of years, um, Darren and I were able to touch base a few times and really we picked up a lot of momentum a few months ago in the fall. Um, and we really were able to put a deal together and then complete it despite the, uh, the COVID pandemic, you know, um, which is not that easy in the first quarter of, of 2020. And Darren, what convinced you it was finally time to sell? You know, I don't, I don't think it was uh, a convincing of the time was right to sell. Um, you know, the, the convincing really was, you know, was Right Networks the right partner? I mean, it, I've had a history with Right Networks that goes back probably 11 years. They were actually Rootworks' first uh, sort of vendor sponsor. So we have, we have a deep relationship with Right Networks that goes, that goes way back. And, uh, you know, for the last few years, I mean, Rick, I've been approached almost on a, oh, at least a biweekly basis from, you know, different possible suitors that, you know, were reaching out to us because we had hit the radar. Um, and so really it was more about finding the right partner. I mean, I just feel like right now um, it's such an interesting time in the profession. And I thought Rootworks, I think we need to go faster, um, bigger and better. And I wanted to find the right partner to do that. Joel, what makes Rootworks the right partner? Well, I think for us, you know, Right Networks is a, you know, well-established long time technology supplier. Um, and as we bring more solutions to market um, and try to complete those solutions even more fully. I think what we've been doing is you know, bundling more applications and integrating more things to have more complete solutions for, for firms and, and their SMB clients. But we really needed more, I think, strategic direction and better understanding. You know, while we're building our own product management capabilities organizationally, um, we're fundamentally technologists. And um, I felt like we really w- could use a, a core you know, um, DNA boost from, from a team and having met Darren and, and his broader team at Rootworks really felt like the, the experience, the expertise, the knowledge, longstanding relationship with the industry that can really help us drive our solution set forward um, to help the digitization that's happening here. Um, we felt like that was really what we were missing. And um, we're thrilled to have, you know, Darren leading that team and, and him helping us now in our market strategy and really impacting where we take our solution set and how we deliver that, you know, to firms to make them more successful. And how does Right Networks help those 800 firms? What's in it for them? Right Networks is, uh, is a foundational company that I think helps Rootworks. Uh, Rootworks has been building technologies that help the front end of, of accounting firms sort of do business better. Right Networks has this incredibly solid foundation that spans different vendors. It's not a single vendor solution. It spans different vendors. And I think adding the two of us together with our front end and and our ability to help change behavior uh, in accounting firms with their security, their enterprise nature, all of that stuff. I mean, the, the combination of the two of us, I think, puts us in a really unique spot, a unique place in the industry right now. Joel, what kind of DNA does Rootworks bring to Right Network? The question I think that, um, you know, at its core, we, we feel that, to, to Darren's point, the, the sort of front office solutions that Rootworks has, has been developing along with their content, peer community, and, and sort of coaching to support that is valuable to all those 5,000 of our existing customers, right, that are firms. Um, and we've, we're growing our firm base at the rate of, you know, more than 1,000 firms a year right now, right? So I think that first, just bringing the Rootworks offering and capabilities to our existing firm customer base is a big win for them. There's no question about that. I think it's likely to make them more successful um, over time. I'd say further, really the impact on our roadmap and our strategic roadmap of offerings going forward, I think will be positively impacted by Darren and the Rootworks team, right? So as we really look at, because it's still a lot of work for firms to, you know, make technology selections and then do the integration they need to do and create processes around those and make it all work for them, make themselves more efficient and productive. 
Um, I think Rootworks understands that really well end to end. And I think we in Right Network can build solutions and partner with the biggest vendors in the industry to bring together best in class solutions that can really you know, be more productive and efficient for our firm customers. So the strategic knowledge that will impact our product roadmap, I think will, will benefit all of our existing and our future firm customers. Is the combination of a technology company with a network of practicing CPA firms uh, create a new kind of breed of animal? Are you essentially creating network of firms or a new kind of firm? I, I think we are, and I, I hope we do, right? So I think first I would say that um, one of the things that really convinced me about Rootworks being the fit is that, you know, Darren and Rootworks are, are, are half of a technology and product company too. I mean, they're really, they're, they're not at their core, but, you know, certainly from a, they've developed, you know, platforms and they, they're more than dipping their toes into technology. So I think there's a lot of commonality and, and sort of crossover there, but the whole front office, back office piece that allows you know, a solution set, but then how, how do you move forward? How do firms move forward to use those solution sets has been to me the critical missing component. And I think that that's what Darren and Rootworks can really help with. And to your point, you know, the network then of firms who are sort of like-minded or are heading down the same path together, are learning together and supporting each other through the peer community that exists at Rootworks is, I think, unique. So, so really, I think that can help not just as we help customers, you know, that are firms, they, they help each other on the same journey, I think it will be very powerful. And, um, and I, I hope create a different kind of a dynamic in the industry, yes. It sounds like it could be a powerful competitive dynamic with uh, firms of common and complementary competencies spread throughout the country uh, using much of the same technology base. Sounds like a firm that, well, Darren, you tell me, if you put together your 800 firms, how big a business would that be? So we actually have some business intelligence around this, Rick. Um, we would be the seventh largest firm in the country uh, with, I think, somewhere north of 9,000 employees doing nearly a billion dollars a year in revenue. But, you know, the, Rick, I was kind of wanting to follow up on what Joel just said. You know, um, you and I and Joel have been around this industry at least long enough now to know that we've been trying to drag along, you know, practitioners into um, what we would all consider the, the technology uh, of the future, I guess. I mean, you and I have been talking about it forever, Rick. And firms, by and large, have just been dragging their feet, so to speak. They, they've sort of looked at, at the internet and technology and the tools as sort of nice to have. You know, some people have said, you know, I think I'll wait this out. Some people have said, you know, I think I'll engage with this a little bit. Other people say, you know, I kind of like things the way they, the way they are. Um, but almost overnight, Rick, we've gone from what was a, you could argue was a nice to have to it's now foundational. You can't do business today if you don't engage, you know, with the tools. I mean, it, it's, it's just it, overnight it became a fact and you can't ignore it right now. And I think the timing of Joel and I getting together with Rootworks and Right Networks couldn't be better because what we're really skilled at in Rootworks is, is helping firms make that move. And what Right Network is incredibly skilled at is being the foundation for lots of different technologies. It's not just one. It's, they're, they're not a single vendor hosting only one tool set. They're, they're a platform that, that can host lots of different tool sets. So you can come into the organization now from lots of different places, whether you're a, a LACERT user, an UltraTax user, or a, a CCH user, it doesn't matter. You can come into the organization and we can help you uh, become that modern firm at this point. So what we have here is a combination of a technology hosting company, uh, a network of firms uh, with a billion dollars in revenue that would rank it as the seventh largest in the business. That makes you a, a force to be reckoned with. What are you guys going to do with all this power? <laughs> uh, I'll leave that to you, Joel. <laughs> oh, okay, that's a, Well, I think that... Um, Certainly, we want to use our power for, for good and not evil, right? So, Rick, <laughs> um, you know, first, we want to help more firms. I mean, I mean, to Darren's point, and even that seventh largest idea, if we, if we think about now, the firms that are in the right networks customer base, you know, that aren't Rootworks, you know, members yet, that aren't part of that community yet. So, we'll add many more to them, move that from hundreds to thousands, I think, over the next few years. Um, and I think we want to, you know, move as many firms as we can toward this modern firm model 
that, that Darren and Rootworks have developed to make them more successful. I think you know, whether that takes the form of more mergers and consolidation or some, you know, there, there's no, at this point, there's no plan for creating, you know, a mega firm of the firms that are our customers. That's, that's uh, not part of the drawing board on the drawing board at this point, but I think helping them and having them help each other to be more successful is absolutely, you know, the core of why we're doing this. Is the COVID economy affecting your firms, Darren? All right, that, that, that's almost the, the perfect example, Rick. Let me just give you, let me, let me just back up just a second and give you uh, an example of something that's happened over the last four weeks. Um, you know, you know, Rick, I've been practicing, I'm a, I was, I've been a practicing CPA for 30 years, you know, with, with an accounting firm that was sitting right there. And, um, you know, when things like, you know, the CARES Act would come out uh, in, in the old days, and I'm thinking back 30 years, 25 years ago, you know, I would be sitting in my four walls, Rick, wondering how in the heck do I interpret what just happened, you know, and, and having nobody to talk to. I have, a, you know, a few staff people, but most, most firms had three, four, five staff people, and, and, and there was usually a, a go-to person that sort of had to figure everything out. Four weeks ago, three weeks ago, whenever the CARES Act passed, we had nearly 4,000 messages inside of our community over the course of seven days, firms helping firms figure this out. So if you just think about the, the, the power of getting out of your four walls as a small practitioner and having the ability to be a part of a community of, of practitioners that are doing the same thing, helping each other, that's been hugely impactful inside of our community over the last four weeks, because I would say that our community has been busier than they've ever been, Rick, in the last four weeks, trying to help small businesses, not only understand what's happening, but get their PPP loans or their EIDL loans. And then, you know, there's this, uh, you know, how do you interpret eight weeks? When does eight weeks start? I mean, it, it's, it's, been, it's actually been so um, gratifying to watch firms helping each other. Uh, whether they like it or not, uh, their clients have dragged them kicking and screaming into advisory work. The reason they became advisors during this COVID crisis is because every single one of their customers was calling them <laughs> and saying, I need help. And so they were being reactive. The platform that I've been working on for the last several years, Rick, is, is, a, is, is a technology platform that allows an accounting firm to go from being reactive, waiting for somebody to ask them something, to gathering all the information that just swirls around everywhere. And it's information that allows a firm to go from being reactive to proactive. And it's information in, in the proactivity that actually allows a firm to become an, an advisor, a true advisor. So really what, what I think has been missing um, and what Joel and I have been really focused on uh, since we've gotten together is, is extending that platform of gathering information so firms can go from being reactive to proactive because that, that is like the key that unlocks advisory services. Let me, let me give you just a, a brief example. So if, if in our firm, I know that I have a partnership that's, that's a client and, and, I, and I knew the answer, and if I knew the answer to the question, do they have a buy-sell agreement? And then if I knew the answer to whether they had life insurance or not, I could be an advisor. I could say, hey, you're a partnership. You don't have a buy-sell agreement and you haven't funded it with life insurance. Let me help you do that. That's, that's being proactive, but I needed the information to do that. Most firms just don't have that. They don't have the ability to gather that, organize it, and act on it. And that's what we've developed in RootWorks and what we're going to integrate with Right Networks and, and their foundational platform, to, I think, to really change firms' lives. Joel, and how is the COVID trauma changing the majority of our customers are small businesses and then a minority are our firms but as you said like 5,000 firms with with um probably 30,000 users our biggest concern was just what's the rate of smb failure going to be sort of out of the chute as it related to covid so we're thinking hey well the firms are going to be busy they have a lot to do um they're going to need a lot of support um we'll get to them in a second but wow what about their small business clients right so you know restaurants and service industries these things just got you know summarily shut down what we've seen thus far in terms of our business and our customer base is the customers that we have come and shrunk in their number of users and their number of subscriptions. So they've been very careful about paring back on unused seats, but we've not seen churn above our typical rates, surprisingly. So I'd say we've been, you know, in late March into early April, we saw sort of acceleration of new customer acquisitions. So I think some people were in a hurry to go remote. Um, they were adding mostly, you know, QuickBooks hosting so they could go remote with their QuickBooks. Our biggest concern was, wow, is our business literally going to contract or shrink, right, between churn and between 
customers shrinking. And we, we still grew the business in April. So net net of all that stuff, we saw a contraction in the customer base, but enough new customers and not unreasonable churn so that we still grew the business. And things look better already sort of here in May. I think our customer base, even on the SMB side, skews a little bit medium size versus very small, right? So um, my guess is that the sort of the, the smaller QuickBooks online only kinds of SMBs are more likely in the service economy, more likely churning or, or uh, disappearing. But we expect to see you know, a very, very slow small business recovery. And I just don't have a view on what that's going to take. But I'd say not as negative and impactful as we thought thus far, which has been, been heartening. And I think on the other side of that is we're seeing that you know, the firms have a lot to do, um, a lot of help they can provide their small business customers. So to Darren's point, you know, the peer community at RootWorks, um, we were you know, doing this deal right at the same time. And even from before our closing, we started working together. And, and that's where I think the technology platform and the relationships that we have at Right Networks, you know, plumbing that into RootWorks client intelligence platform, we were able to take a, a partnership we had with a company called Bluevine. It's one of the fintech companies who was able to get PPP on board and working probably about a week in. So almost missed the first go round of the PPP fundings that really happened at the big banks. But we've now made, and you know, some of these have been RootWorks, you know, firm client clients, as well as a lot of the SMB clients out of the right network space. We've made now hundreds of PPP loans have been applied for and then delivered and funded through our partnership with Bluevine that had been in place. Just because at right networks, we have partnerships with people in fintech um, to make loans to our large customer base. So these are great examples, I think, where we've been able to connect a large small business client set that we have with firms that, that are helping them. And with, in this case, partnerships that can really add value. In this case, we're able to pull those together, collaborate quickly, I think, between what was RootWorks and Right Networks. And now, you know, we're together, it'll be even easier. Um, but we're very excited about how we can pull technology and data um, really out of a very large customer base to inform Darren's client intelligence platform. Very excited about that. We're just starting to work on that between our, our tech teams. So I think that we'll be able to deliver a realization of delivering data into a decision-making process for firms that allow them to be proactive advisors, to Darren's point. And we think it's really been missing. Like, advisory sounds great, but what offer do I make to whom? Do I really understand my customers enough? I and mean, how much work is it for me to, to have that somehow surfaced and delivered to me? Joel, with your insight into SMBs, what do you think is the outlook? I think it's going to be very slow recovery. I mean, I think it will happen, but I think it's being fits and starts. I just don't think we know what it's going to take to sort of restart this thing. I, I don't think it's going to be that easy. I think there, the factors around, you know, what's happening with unemployment, obviously, you know, the different incentives that have exist, in, whether it's PPP or unemployment and, and other things that have been and potentially future stimulus bills that, that are being discussed. I think that's just going to make it very sort of choppy on the return to work for so many. I think that luckily for us that are supporting financial professionals, accounting professionals, tax professionals, you know, there's a lot to be figured out and a lot to do. And I think we just really need to focus on, on supporting our SMB clients because they're just going to need a lot of help. And I think, they're, I think there's going to be a lot of you know, failure. And then hopefully those businesses and those entrepreneurs can restart themselves. I think that's part of the beauty of you know, our economy. Many temporary setbacks are going to create a, uh, a longer and slower return to normalcy than, than we had hoped, I think. Darren? What's your view about what's, what's the outlook ahead? Everybody's kind of feeling the same thing. This is going to be a bit of a slow recovery. There's going to be some fits and starts. Uh, I think we will, I think we're going to get there, but I think it's going to be some rough sledding. We're going to change behaviors mm -hmm. and expectations. Business is going to forever change. Uh, we're going to rely more on the internet. We're going to ask businesses to be more socially responsible. We're going to ask for, you know, contactless kind of things whether that's currency or payments or, or whatever it might be, businesses have to, are, for them to survive, I think, and to thrive at this point, they have to reinvent themselves in sort of a new way that becomes acceptable. What will a, a successful or a surviving CPA firm look like on the other end of this? Everything looks different coming out of this, Rick. We're gonna learn to work virtually we're gonna learn that we're not punching time clocks. We're gonna learn how to do more with less because we're gonna leverage technology better. I'm trying to figure out what's not gonna change inside an accounting firm coming out of this. I, I think the majority of partners that, that I know in firms, Rick, um, were just scared to make any changes. 
you know, we kind of keep doing what we did yesterday and there, there's no impetus for change. But now that the impetus for change was forced upon us, we see that, hey, we can, we can hop on a Zoom call. It works just fine. Or our, our employees can work from home and they still get stuff done. And I think with that knowledge now, everything changes. Because going back to the old way wasn't necessarily better. I think there, there's, a, there's a new way. We're embracing it now, but we have to embrace it more effectively and with intention as we move forward. So Darren, what kind of firms won't survive? I think firms that won't survive are the firms that rely purely on compliance. I mean, there's money in compliance. Don't get me wrong. I think firms should be doing compliance. But firms that are not proactive, that are not adding value, are going to struggle to survive. Firms that want to go back to the way that they used to do things. I mean, we're sending people home, Rick, arguably for six months. That, that's a lifestyle change, right? Clearly for three months. People have changed the way they do business. And in, in their expectations, employees are changing their expectations. So I, I just think so much is, is, is ready to change. And I, and I think it's a good change. Those who can't adapt to the new reality, I think, I, I, I can't imagine why a customer is going to want to go to them. Joel, from your point of view, what's the small business technology stack going to look like at the other end of this? There are really two pieces of that. And I think a lot of times we thought just about this technology stack being for the people doing the work in the firm or people doing the work, let's say, at the small business. And right now, we have three packages for our QuickBooks hosting. That's, that's sort of our largest, our legacy product. You know, sort of basic QuickBooks hosted with a few things. Um, we have a package that includes Bill.com, Expensify, Avalara, I think a PDF reader. So we've taken sort of the top kind of five applications that are modern SaaS applications that we see the majority of our customers using. And so let's just put that all together, make sure that's fully integrated and, you know, sharing data and so forth. So what's, what we see happening generally is some of the, an anchor legacy application, like a tax application, maybe a, an accounting application with some modern SaaS applications, you know, integrated being sort of the generic stack. So I think that's that's been happening. That's happening as well in all SaaS land, right? So for the smaller businesses, it might just be QuickBooks Online, but still with Bill.com and Expensify and so forth, right? So we spent a lot of time on, on that. And I think what we see happening more in the future is a verticalization of those kinds of bundles too. So in the construction vertical, there are two or three applications that really matter that are very typically used by the majority of people. So we're looking at sort of vertical specific bundled applications that we think make a lot of sense for that sort of tech stack for those users. And I think that becomes in the controller in the SMB is probably gonna be using you know, those applications. As a technology supplier, we're just making sure that those can all work in an environment, be remotely accessed you know, securely, which is critical with their data um, you know, protected. So I think that's, that's what, um, what we're seeing. And I think we'll see more of and now how do I interface that to my client? So if it's a services business, a lot more of the, wow, okay, I got to get sort of DocuSign, document management, you know, back and forth, maybe a secure channel that's mobile versus just email. Those kinds of things are, I think, are raising what's necessary and, and sort of pushing the, the functionality forward, not just, hey, I'm doing the work, what applications do I need? But then in addition to that, how do I then communicate with that client and do that efficiently? To Darren's point, maybe take payments, you know, it's from proposal through payments, and there are a number of, you know, technologies and companies working in that area that I think, you know, we're working with some of them today. And we'll see, I think, some of them being more important in the future as well. Joel, what is the role of FinTech going to play in the future of Right Networks and Works? You know, this PPP loan, PPP loan situation uh, showed us that a little bit, but uh, I think it's going to be more and more important. If you look at, I would say, look at what Intuit did buying Credit Karma, right? So you look, you look at an accounting company, you know, as far as I can tell, that strategy is fundamentally, they just want to be a broker between a large customer base and the intelligence about their financial situation and financial products and services, right? That's, that's a matchmaking two-sided network model um, that I think is going to be maybe the future even of Intuit. So that's interesting. I'd say it's, I'd say FinTech broadly, so certainly loan products and related financial services that could be matched to the needs of small businesses well, I think needs to be an important part of our future. Um, we've done some work there and some partnering. I'd say we have a lot more work to do, which I'm excited to, to, to dig into. And I think with the addition of RootWorks, that will help us. You know, how can we not just do the tech piece, 
but sort of introduce that concept, make the why and the how understood to you know, firms, and then let them be the advisors for those services, right? So, so it's, I'd say in general, our philosophy right now is to try to leverage and support firms to help small business clients. Right. So versus us as right now, we're working directly with a huge small business customer base. We have those customers. Many of them are connected to CPA firms. And we're make, first, we start there. Let's support the firms in being advisors to their clients and proving these products um, and their efficacy. But I think um, I think fintech is going to be very important for us going forward as, you know, a new kind of revenue stream beyond you know the streams that we have today. It seems that uh, fintech was able to do. Uh, instantly and automatically what many banks were unable to do. And the other thing that was critical about that, in my opinion, was, you know, what SMBs were getting help, right? So we had we had mass, you know, SMB shutdown. And I think what happened first, not surprisingly, but a little of the rich get richer, right? So it was first, you know, small businesses that had existing banking relationships that had loan products. So if you're a Bank of America or Citibank customer with a loan already, of course, it was easier for them to approve you for a follow-on loan from this back by the government. I think that's where a lot of the early dollars went. Um, I think I really believe we were able to help a lot of not necessarily fully unbanked SMBs, maybe some who didn't have a banking relationship, literally, and and many who didn't have a banking relationship that was able to support them given sort of the chaos of PPP. And I think that's really where the beauty of fintech on the on the loan product side is you can get access to the SMB's data on our on in right networks, and you can make a decision about making a loan. <laughs> and people aren't printing out PDFs and faxing them in and scanning them in and you don't have to check back in if you've done it we've been giving you know receivables lines to smbs and you can just be checking their quickbooks receivables you know balance over time and allowing them to draw more against the loan without having you know it's, it's much easier to both understand the client their credit worthiness the appropriate loan products and make the loan but then also service alone so i think you know um the beauty of that is yeah technology is being used by you know all of these small businesses and I think you know, getting having fintech get access to their records appropriately can really be a, a win-win for both sides. Darren, how is fintech, as broadly defined, going to play a role in accounting firms going forward? You know, Rick, you and I've been around the profession long enough to remember, you know, when, you know, there was all kinds of tax software out there that you know everything was decentralized from everybody was creating a software application. And, you know, the next thing you know, 10, 15 years later, those things kind of start rolling up into these things called suites. Um, and, and now we're sort of in the, the next iteration. And the next iteration is connected platforms, is connected pieces, FinTech being a, a huge component of that. It's, it's, about, it's about money, information, knowledge, whatever you want, all that stuff being connected and flowing seamlessly. And I think the accountant has to be the quarterback of that. They, they have to be the master of that. And it's, it's not going to be, it's not going to be one company who builds everything. I think in an accounting firm, an accounting firm is going to have to uh, be masterful enough to pick the right tool sets um, to pull together lots of information. Cause we're not, we're not talking about just three, four five apps. We're talking about 15, 20, lots of different things. And some of those things have to be client facing uh, like websites and some of them are payments, you know, and some of them are scheduling and some of them are video conferencing and all this stuff has to come together and feel extremely seamless to the end user customer and usable to the firm. I think that's really going to be one of the roles, uh, a key role of an accounting firm going forward is the ability to pull together the right tool sets across all this stuff, including FinTech. Um, to, to really service their customers. Where does it go from here? At this point, Rick, there's not, there's not another specific step. Um, I think that, um, you know, for Right Networks, what we've been on a mission the last two to three years is to definitely get more firm focused and think a lot about firm through firms to SMBs. And we like that. We like that model from a technology go to market standpoint, a support standpoint. Um, and we see, I think we, we, we love, you know, this industry that we're in. So I think what's going to happen that we're going to be eyes wide open on, to Darren's point, is it's not going to be the same coming out of this. So when we come out of this, it's going to be different. I think that in general, we hope to be one of the people sort of driving that change and, and supporting that change. What's most important to us is to think about making firms successful and them supporting these SMBs. 
And I think that as that takes form in technology and then in practice and in a peer community, um, we're going to be one of the leaders there. And I think we will, um, we'll be blazing a path with, uh, with our eyes wide open. If you guys are right, you're propelling a paradigm shift in the technology, financial accounting firm space, redefining how technology and accounting firms work together, redefining how accounting firms work with each other and with technology, redefining how, how uh, financial technologies work together. And something very different is going to come out of this. The two of you have done something very dramatic. It's, a, it's like an epic change in the way business gets done. Congratulations and good luck. Is there anything I haven't asked that I should? Yeah, I think at least from my perspective, Rick, um, you know, what we're, what we're attempting to do is, is create a, uh, a platform that, you know, small and medium sized accounting firms can operate on. And the thing is, is they kind of get to bring their own device to that platform, if that makes sense. So they, you, you don't have to switch tax software to be a part of our, our platform. You know, you, you have to come with a concept that you want to be connected, that you want to be cloud-based, you know, that you want to serve customers end to end. But we're not going to tell you what device to bring, so to speak. Uh, we're we're going to help you pull that together because it, it really is, we, we call it the performance platform but it really is a platform of all the different pieces and parts seamlessly integrated. And, and I think that's really, I, I think the beauty of what we're, Joel and I are attempting to do with team. Yeah. I would, I would, I would reinforce that by saying, I think we're building our mission here is to build the most complete and comprehensive platform that drives success for firms. And that's not a single vendor platform, right? By definition, you know, part of what we're doing is, curating and then working with major vendors to deliver solutions that people can come from where they're at, as Darren said, but take advantage of, you know, an integrated platform that contains things they've worked with in the past, but really now with a sort of business model and a playbook, they can leverage that forward much more dramatically. And then with support of a community, um, just be more successful. Best in class platform that we more integrated and um, I think more powerful than any single stack from an existing vendor. Well then, thank you very much, Joel Hughes. Darren Root, I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Rick.